in the kinetics experiment is the batch reactor. The reagents we use are hydrochloric acid, sodium hydroxide, and isopropyl acetate. The sodium hydroxide and hydrochloric acid were taken from the stock solution, and one liter of isopropyl acetate was prepared, as stated in the solutions manual. We also have an ice bath, and we measured out six milliliters of hydrochloric acid into a bunch of different 250 mil um, flasks, and they are sitting in the ice bath. To be in the experiment, you're going to add 100 milliliters of isopropyl acetate to this flask, 100 milliliters of sodium hydroxide to another flask. You're going to stopper them, you're going to put so, uh, flask weights on them, put them into the water bath. You're going to turn on the water bath, set it to the first temperature, and I'm just turning it off so you can hear what I'm saying, and you're going to let it equilibrate for 15 minutes. When 15 minutes have gone by, you're going to take your pipette, you're going to draw 5 milliliters of sodium hydroxide, well, you're going to grab a hydrochloric <coughs> acid first. Uh, you're going to draw 5 milliliters of, hydro of sodium hydroxide first, add it to the hydrochloric acid, mix it around so that they, they're well mixed. Uh, then you're going to draw 5 milliliters of isopropyl acetate, add it to the, the flask with hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide. So you're going to add 2 drops of phenolphthalein to your solution, bring it over to your burette that's filled with sodium hydroxide. You titrate dropwise with sodium hydroxide until the solution turns pink and make sure you record the initial and final volumes in the burette. So after your initial titration, you're going to combine the contents of both flasks into one flask and at the same time you're going to record the time that you do you combine them that way you know how long the reaction is going for. Uh, every two minutes you're going to draw a 10 mil sample and then titrate it like you did the initial titrations. Um, you're going to add phenol saline indicator, two drops, and bring it to your uh, burette that is again filled with sodium hydroxide and titrate till it turns pink, recording the initial and final volumes of sodium hydroxide in the burette. You're going to take samples every two minutes for the 20 and 30 degree trials and every one minute for the 40 and 50 degree trials. And you're going to do that until the you're going to keep taking samples until the amount of sodium hydroxide you add to each flask until it turns pink is the same. Hi, <laughs> this is the PFTI. And uh, <laughs> first, what you want to do is calibration. So we're going to use water to calibrate the, the pumps. So you fill these two tanks down here with water. You fill this one right here by lifting the lid, and you fill the one in the back through this funnel. And uh, the main power switch is right here, and here are the two power switches for the pumps. When you're doing calibration, you want to do one pump at a time. So you have the NOH pump and the ester pump. So first we're going to work with the NOH pump. So you, you turn on the only the pump one, and then you set using this nozzle right here to the percent flow that you want to test. So you want to range from 10% to 50%, but you don't want to go above 50%. So the first point is 10%, and you would have the water flow through. And here is where the water is exiting out. You would use your a stopwatch and set to about 90 seconds and you take three samples of um, water for each 90 seconds and then you'd record the amount of the volume of water that came out and um, you get the flow rate the volumetric flow rate for the second pump you, you want to redo the same experiment but make sure that the first pump is off and you want to change to different percent flows. So for 20%, you might want to use uh, one minute, and uh, for when you get to 50, you might have to change, get a volume sample of half a minute. After you have calibration data for both pipe pumps, you want to graph the calibration curve and then use that to figure out 
approximate values of where you'd want to set each pump so that you'd have uh, equal molar flow. So in order to check it, you would have to first determine the residence times that you want for each uh, trial. You're suggested to take uh, three residence times of one minute, three minutes, and uh, five minutes. So for each of those, you cal calculate the amount of flow that you would need. And um, then you'd set the first pump to half of the, uh, the volume of natural flow that you need. And then you take the you take the sample again, and you repeat what you did before, where you get the a certain amount of time and then a certain amount of volume. And afterwards, you would turn on the second pump, and just that until you have double the amount of volume coming from the first pump. That you okay. So for the PFTR, you're gonna do four terminal temperatures. I have a three resistance times per temperature. The temperatures are going to be the same ones that you have for the battery deck. So to start the experiment, you're going to make sure your water bath is filled. Fill through this hole right here. Make sure that your stir is turned on. In the tanks down here, we have the ester, and in the one in the back, we have NOH. And each one contains 20 liters of reagent. So after that, you want to set the, the pumps to the setting that you want for the, the different resonance times based on the calibration data, and then you want to check the, the pump flow to see if it's the correct flow rate. You've got your first resin time going. Uh, you're going to let it equilibrate in the reactor for about five minutes. Uh, and then you're going to take a flask from the ice bath, fill it with six mils of hydrochloric acid. Bring it down, and you're going to draw 10 mils of your reactants. And you're going to add it to the hydrochloric acid, and then you're going to titrate it. Off samples uh, for each residence time, you're gonna up increase the temperature of the water bath. So you're gonna go over to the evaporator and you're gonna collect their hot product, bring it over here, and you're going to simultaneously dump the hot water in there and open this valve here so that your reactor water bath doesn't overflow. Um, once you've gotten the temperature to the right temperature, you're just going up the, the increments as uh, the batch reactor. Uh, you're gonna do the same through residence times. Uh, recording the titrations for each sample. So titration, you want to take five milliliter samples from each of the tanks and first add NaOH to the HCl and then followed by the isopropyl acetate and then you want to titrate it. And then you want to add the indicator and then titrate recording the initial value and the value after titration. <laughs> you should go in that room. <laughs> so, uh... <laughs> <laughs>